still pinch with one arm. Um, this guy does. Fortunately, learn, learn from the start from uh, someone who had already about 10, 12 years experience. Oh, do you have the tools there? I noticed. You see these, this chair here I got in? I don't have the support under my legs. That's not good. Uh, so when putting somebody in a chair, make sure that when we're sitting, you know, it's horizontal that I actually got pressure underneath. Adjusted the chair so I have the support under my femur, which is very important for especially those that haven't stood for a while. And you know, we don't want any breaking of legs because that's literally part of their bones now, so yeah. that's actually support. So that's one of the reasons. Number two, um, should be good enough reason, you know, you don't want to break anybody's legs while they're trying to stay out of hospital. This knee belt shouldn't be too tight when putting it on. And by the way, I make sure that I'm in the chair all the way back. This belt is very, not everybody has to use it, but it's, it's individual for um, various reasons. Uh, whether you've got a high para, quadriplegic, paraplegic, um, we call it para deluxe, <laughs> or somebody who just needs a bit of uh, stability. Um, I actually have people that don't even use um, this belt, like Jimmy's going to be showing us today. Um, and then I have people who actually have MS, they just have a severe amount of balance issues. They actually have widened the footrest and they got they put their feet left and right. So and they just use this one really loose so they know they're not gonna fall. Um, or a bilateral amputee, same thing there. Um, they want to keep their legs on. So we're gonna go out from a para today. As I stand I give this little tug because I want to keep my what we call the 45 degree angle, a spine angle, which is actually important to give a, a good maximum flex. Um, I noticed the seat height is very high for me. I'll adjust it down for myself. <laughs> now, obviously, this is going to, I mean, you can hear my voice. I'm actually doing automatically more bench press and pushing into my tummy, otherwise, I'd be here. I need a ball like this. So. And if it's too high, I have no, I'm totally restricted in my movement. So it's everybody's individual, you know, adjust and try, try and error. Um, well, it's that they made it out of wood and they bolted a, an extra <laughs> plank underneath, you know? So there's a lot of ways of doing um, their individual. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you some pictures of how the guys have done. And uh, this actually isn't a bad idea. Have you lengthened your clubs? When it comes to uh, hitting the, the irons, um, it'll probably be off towards more the right side because your deepest swing point is your right shoulder. See, if I'm turning, Turning, I'd be there. But I'm not turning. <laughs> so, for you golf teachers out there, <laughs> it changes when it comes to wheelchair golf. That's Sevy fellas here, as you said, at least this animal's tied up. <laughs> we, we've done it where they have the, have the uh, person take a few practice swings. Where that club's hitting the ground is where we see the ball up. That, that does that definitely um, work, but they don't actually go for the ball there. <laughs> I actually interfered in that. Right, um, and then I wouldn't want to. I'd want to just pick it up, pick it up, and if you look there, that's where my ideal position is, back to my right side. Now, the other thing in picking it up, I put the club down, and I move the club forward, then I grab it, move it forward, then I grab it, keeping the club squared in uh, on my line. 
line. The reason being, in going up, look at where my thumb is right now. It's underneath. Yes, it's underneath. If I did this, Lose control. Still got no turn. A lot of pros don't understand that, but didn't understand that, and they come in and say, "Why we actually grab the glove, push it forward, and then we let them grab it?" Because my arm action is still going to be here, and then I don't have to ever learn to grab the glove. Ooh! <laughs> Catch my breath. <laughs> I look a lot healthier than that. So take it off. <laughs> All right. As far as my my personal swing. Oh, it's been raining. I'm so used to playing the hard ground. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't do any bounce here. Hey, where's my bounce? trying there, I'm not trying to hit anything, I don't try and aim for the ball, I'm just letting something go up and through, and I'm not even thinking about my through swing, I'm actually just picking up and I'm throwing like a flat stone over the water, almost at the, at that's 12 o'clock, it's at the 1 o'clock position. So when I'm throwing this club, I'm picking it up, I'm using my wrists, you notice I'm wristy, on the back swing, get up, and then almost like a little bit of Jim Fury, <laughs> and throwing the club in that direction. So my actual um, swing thought, would be this. I'll stop on the back side. Oh, we did. Okay, that's basically what I do. Where's the light just next to Woo! Oh, thanks. Hitting two hands. I tried. It's <laughs> no, but if you've got if you've got two hands and you've got a bit of core strength, then you're wrong with. I do that nowadays when I when I play a full shot. That's just you know that's I don't ever go a full swing with one arm anymore. I don't have the power number one to get my my wrist off of one. Um, so this is my two-hand two shot. The ball's almost at my right toe. That's my personal and most important. I'm not gonna call me more, uh, maybe say, important than this grip. You'll never see a bad, uh, never see a good golf with a bad grip. You might see a good golf with a bad grip. But you'll never see a good golf with a bad grip. And the blind taught me this about 30, 40 years ago. And I was watching them do this, and they dropped it down. Their arms are on their on their body, and in front of them. Go from here. But we can see that our lines are going grooves are straight over our head, right? Club is upright. It's not leaning forward. Okay, it's upright, and then I take it in my hand. Okay, I hold it sort of finger from the top. Get it square. Right body. What's left on my right side. So it's almost like holding a bucket or a suitcase in this right side. I have an overlapping, but if it's an interlocking, it's still gonna be there. So if your hands are too big and you're interlocking, you probably tend to wanna do that. That's not where I want the clap. That's why we say in 10 fingers, I just have an overlapping, but it's still the same position. This, if we try and do it differently with a wheelchair, we will not succeed. I haven't seen anybody succeed by holding the club like that, compared to that. And I've proven it on the club monitor, you know, the, 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 the launch monitors, the club end speed, the higher speed, and the most consistent speed, and balance, because this is a balance, like the tightrope walker's using his rope, uh, sorry, his pole to, to go over the wire. This is what this is for us. And it also hits the golf ball. But we've got to understand, this is not balance helping aid, this is not crutch, this is everything that we need to go from here to here, without, boom going there. Yeah. Okay. So, 
I'll be doing it in the next 30 years. <laughs> finish, I don't know. Hands forward, you notice that? There's the ball, my hands are forward. My weight's on, sorry, my side's on the side of the, of the machine, the chair. Out of space. So I'm almost like a reverse C if you're looking from this side. Body. My right side's lower than my left because my right hand is lower than my left hand. Right? So, yeah, there. No, I'm not aiming right. How many people do that? I wonder why they slice the ball. Even the, the workers, right? Oh, yeah. But here yeah, it really is. Pick it up. Punch down. I'm a puncher of the ball because there's no turn. I don't even try and lift that ball. I've been doing this almost 15 years now. That's fine. So you see. <laughs> After a while, I've too many balls there, that means I don't work. <laughs> so, routine, ritual. As you get more relaxed, as you get more, how we call it, uh, loose. Yep, it's been a long week. My core is like, <laughs> because this is like, really, it's like in the gym for me doing this. That's why it's so important for paras and quads to stand and do something outside the norm because it's actually waking up neurons firing all over the body from the little snaps there. Who knows? So it's giving me what I have today. I've recovered what I have today from not from sitting, waiting, and playing video games. It's from standing up and doing things out of my comfort zone, which is tiring. Okay? So you won't find me doing hours of hitting golf balls. Um, if I'm going to go play, I'll probably just hit about 10. I'll probably do more stretchings than actually hitting balls. Uh, because that's probably for me. The biggest challenge is to get my body, because when I'm pushing or I'm getting in out of the bath or a car, it's all pulling these muscles this way. So we're going to stretch them this way. You look at Matt, he looks pretty healthy. He's probably a lot more flexible than me, but I'm 20 years older than you. <laughs> That's probably 20 years older than you. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. But you got core, so there's no excuse for right now. <laughs> Okay, so the same thing with a longer iron. Maybe we can get a wood out here because it's a lot easier for me than anything longer there. Give me a drive. Uh, Why don't you get that tailor made in that yeah. white and red head cover? Chris is just having fun, making sure that my damn caddy gives me the pad line. Cool. <laughs> Now in this case, there we go. I need an adult today because I don't feel like stretching the hands. By the way, you know the, the modernist ball dispenser? Oh. The modernist ball dispenser, have you heard of that? It's a little plastic bucket, literally, and it's got a little mat with it and tea. You can just practice your tee shots the whole day. You just put a bucket of balls in it, you just touch that and lose the ball and okay. you can put it anywhere. You don't need electricity. Really cool. We've got a whole other bit of our chapters. All right. Once again, easy game. Smooth. Up. Oh, that was too slow to swing there. There's a flex triangular. Tee up a little high. That's one, that's one. No need to worry about trying to hit the ball far. You've got the right club. Just experiment with it. In this case, I'd use a senior flex. My guy's using a senior flex driver. I think it's 12 degree. He hit 234 in a long drive. One arm is a quadriplegic with a long drive. Velcro grips. All right. So from one arm to two arms. Okay. Get closer to the so what I did was, 
and if guys come with one, um, and they wanted to hit two arms and they got no rotation, and you say, okay, we'll make a compromise because this is not a way to hit a golf ball. But this could be. Pick it up. And let it go. So I actually throw it and let it go with the one hand. Then try and just do a little Bernard Langer. Yeah. Right? Okay. The important is when we put our club down, that is where I want the, the okay. ball because I can't slide. Like the first one I did last, I couldn't get the club there because I can't move to the ball. I'm actually just stopping myself from falling. So I'm throwing the club as a balance aid. I don't even think about ball, I think balance. I say it starts with a B, good balance, you'll hit a good ball. <laughs> okay. So, once again, the grip, I don't mess around. I don't. Oh, by the way, if you see someone doing that, they've lost it. I just picked up very quickly. Just look here. You probably can't see it from there, but look on the side. You see the clubs leaning forward? I have to actually open my fingers to get it back in there. That's the leverage that we need that just happens to keep our balance. You'll also notice people won't have the right distance to the ball. If they do this, I hold them, they get down, that's perfect, right? Now I'll fumble, pick it up and put it down again. I'm not even going to look. That ball's too close, right? That's at the hose or now. So that little difference I mean I'm going to be doing something like this to actually hit a perfect ball, which is not necessary if you don't fumble your grip. So as you, I'll let you put it in and I'll take yep. it away so you can get it in. Alright? So move the tub so you can get right at the club. Alright. So from that, I can't talk now because I'm going to breathe out. And as I breathe, I'm actually falling. You can see my body gets top heavy and I start doing a bit of a sway and I try and catch my balance the weight of the club head that I'm going to produce through just the physics. because I wanted to and I didn't. That's not what I'm looking for in golf. That was a different way to hit a golf ball for me. All right, so no excuses. There's only one grip and that's either with the two hands, interlocking, overlapping. That's the position of the right fingers. Throw with the one hand, one more. Notice I grab it slightly shorter as well. Do this. Because I'm balancing again. Clip. Use a softer shaft. Do you have a driver that's softer shaft? Yeah, perfect. This is what I'm going to show that next time. Uh, I'll well. grab that, please. I 
I know what I do know is this is tight.